does that story end? Well, you're just gonna have to wait and see. What's up, les Tarla? It's your boy Lucael. Welcome back to Detroit Become Human. This is episode six in the last episode. Let's see. Connor and Hank went into this kind of pigeon infested apartment looking for another deviant, which led to this very exciting chase. However, we weren't able to catch the deviant because we chose instead to save Hank from falling off the building. And then with Marcus, we got to meet the different androids on the Jericho, which are all like, I think they're all deviants and they are slowly dying it seems because they need more blue blood they need more spare parts so marcus's suggestion was to go out and try and get some from like the cyber life uh warehouse or something like that and then with kara oh boy we came upon this mansion looking for help from this guy called zlatko but uh we didn't find any help instead we found this very Toy Story Sid kind of fucked up dude who is uh, taking apart androids and running experiments on them and just kind of doing a lot of messed up stuff. <laughs> Fortunately, we were able to escape and we now have another android following us called Luther. Then Connor went to Hank's house and found him unconscious playing Russian roulette, which is a little worrying. But we helped him to wake up and now we're going to be going to some kind of club to look for like another missing android. So that was the previous episode, but now it's time for this episode. So without any further ado, guys, let's jump right back in. And yes, it's another tank top video. There's going to be a lot of tank top videos this summer. <laughs> November 6th. 6th. 8 p.m. So yeah, this is some kind of like warehouse. A lot of drones. A lot of autonomous trucks. So one of the things that kind of like drive themselves, so that's good, I guess. Maybe there's no guards. This is crazy. If they catch us, we're dead. What we're we dead anyways. We need to find the Cyberlife warehouse. That's where they keep the spare parts and the blue blood. Follow me. Okay. Uh, she seems to know where she's going, so let's follow. But yeah, a lot of this stuff is automated, so maybe there's not like that many guards around. I mean, there's probably like cameras and stuff like that, but... Don't let them see us. Reach... Follow north? Wait, which one's north? Wait, I lost you guys. <laughs> Where'd you go? Are you north? No, that's... Uh, oh. Okay, let's all stick together, please. We can't spread out. We need to stick together. So yeah, this is... Watch out. Oh, they do have guards. Do do? But are the guards also I'll androids? Which one is Nord? I I know it's only been one video and I already forgot their names, but I'm really bad at remembering names, as you guys know. I guess North is the girl. Whoop. Yeah, this is a very dangerous mission, of course, but they have to take the risk because it's that or dying. So... Okay, I guess if we go up there, we might have like a better view. There it is. There's the warehouse. This has to be like close to the water, right? It has to be like on the harbor or something. Because they got all these crates. Marcus, climb up here. I'm coming. Wait, I had a... I think I had a choice here, but I didn't have time to see. I think they're real people. Doesn't look to be an android. At least they were dressed like a real person. All right, we're getting the closer. The we're almost there. Almost there. Uh. They are very good at parkour. 
Are all the androids good at parkour like that? Cyber life warehouses. We have everything we're looking for. First, we have to get rid of that drone. How do we do that? Leave it to me. How am I supposed to do that? Preconstruct. All right, let's use our super android abilities. Okay, what if I jump and I would be spotted? Yeah, okay. What if I would be too high? Okay. This is so handy, like you just get to freeze time and calculate all these different paths and... The androids would be good at everything if they can do that. I mean, I guess they are. <laughs> okay, so... Oh. Okay. No, it would be too hard. Okay. Would be too far. Damn, Marcus, you really think you can pull that off? That seems really... Alright, let's do it. I'm surprised it was okay. evil, yeah. even able yeah, to fly fine. that long. Good job, Marcus. Thanks. All right, North is the girl, and she's Take as much as you can. appreciating us. Uh, search crates. Okay. So we're looking for, like, are we looking for anything specific? Just blue blood and, like, spare parts? They put it in these bags that look just like blood bags, too. Oh. Hello. You were trespassing on private property. Your presence constitutes a level two infraction. I will notify security. John! God damn machine! Where is it this time? Oh shit, oh shit. Grab and hide. Run away. Kill guard? Or hide? Um. I guess we should try and grab him and hide. John! I need your help. John! Oh, we, wait, can we communicate with him by touching him? Hold, release, attack, release. Um, no, we should hold. Let's not attack anyone as long as we can, you know? The drone now this. We don't want to make a scene. Just my luck. I wonder if he maybe will decide to help us, but he's not a deviant, so he has to obey his programming. Let's finish up and get out of here. What is he doing? Is he just find some blue blood? We still don't have enough. Okay, he's just staying there. I guess he's decided to help us. Well, here's some. We should have a good amount by now. So it's crazy to check the bigger crate. He's just kind of standing there. I mean, I guess that's good, right? <laughs> Alright, let's check what's in the bigger crate. It's going a little too well so far. It's just a bunch of androids. Why aren't you like us? Don't you want to be free? I mean, you should know, Marcus, like, you were one of them not that long ago. Like, you must know 
they need to go through a process to reach this point. Like they don't, I mean, I kind of just want to close it again because we know they're not deviant. So if we free them, they might just like sell us out. But maybe they all have the potential to be free. Like maybe if we teach them, maybe if we talk to them, maybe they could also become deviants. But then it's more mouths to feed, you know? <laughs> mouths to feed. I still don't really know like how much blue blood they really need. Like, is it only when you're injured? Do you need to take it like regularly? I don't really know, but if if we have limited resources, we shouldn't take more people with us. I feel so. I'm just gonna close it. That's all we can carry. Let's go. Plus, uh, they don't know the plan. Like, it's gonna be a little hard to really. He's on their side. We can't trust him. He took a risk for us. We can't just leave him here. We can't bring him back. It's too dangerous. Uh, can we discuss this a little bit more? <laughs> like, can you explain why you want to come? Take me with you. Like, I don't know, because when we touched him, it sounds like they were, like, communicating, maybe, when they can... Because we know they can't speak like tele well not telepathically but more like electronically but maybe when they touch then they have like a direct connection and they can talk but we don't know what marcus and this guy were talking about like were we able to explain the situation like i mean he didn't really fight back or try to uh get the guy's attention so maybe he's okay so two of us said let's not bring him and then one of us said let's bring him so if i also want to bring him it's two against two I mean, what if he leads them back to us? But like, we don't know if he's a deviant. Is he a deviant? Could it really happen like that fast? Like just from this small situation, he's already turning into a deviant? Because like, it all happens in their minds. We don't really get to see it. So it could be that just from seeing us, he turned. But I don't think so. I don't think he's a deviant. And if so, he might just be looking for a way to like tell like cyber life about us. So I don't. I don't think we should bring him. I'm sorry. You can't come with us. I helped you. It's not fair. Oh. I helped you and now you're just going to leave without me? Now you're getting it. You're no better than humans. You're no better than humans. So maybe you it's are deviant after all. Right. Ah, shit. Okay, maybe he was a deviant after all. <laughs> Uh oh, they have dogs. You are committing a class three offense. This infraction is being reported to the police. Ah, Stay shit. They are opening fire. Are they real dogs or android dogs? I wonder. Alright, I guess I should have brought him with. Okay. Just cut straight to us blood. getting back to Jericho. There will be enough for everyone. We couldn't have done it without Marcus. I. Didn't really do anything special. <laughs> I just followed you guys. Okay, I guess we should have brought him with us, but it's too I came late to now. Jericho because here androids are free. Free to live in the dark, hoping that no one finds us. Free to die in silence, waiting for a change that's never gonna come. Thank you. Well, you're being a little negative now. But I don't want that freedom. And I'm not going to beg for the right to smile, or love, or stand tall. I don't know about you, but there's something inside me that knows that I am more than what they say. I am alive, and they're not going to take that from me anymore. Our days of slavery are over. What humans don't want to hear, we will tell them. What they don't want to give, we take. We are people. We are alive. We are free. Yeah! Nice little rallying speech. So yeah, he's definitely been radicalized by what he's been through. But I don't know that all these other androids are on the same level of like 
uh, revolution that he is. The group returned with full bags. John becomes deviant. Oh. Oh, so he did turn? Well, see, I didn't know that. Like, you don't know who's a deviant or not, just at a glance. But again, it's all happening in their mind. If I'd known he'd become a deviant, I would have brought him with us. But like, I figured if he's still just like a regular android, he's probably just looking for a way to do his job as a security guard by like following us and telling them where we are. Ah, oh, man. Well, now I wish I really wish I'd brought him with us. I feel bad for leaving him behind. Shit. John wants to join. Ah, oh, man. Okay, yeah, I feel bad about that. I'm not going to replay it. We have to accept our choices, but if I'd known he was a deviant, I would have brought him. All right. All right, the sexiest androids. Eden Club. Here's the famous Eden Club. This gun be good. Oh, feels like somebody's playing with a drill inside my skull. You sure this is the place? It's the address in the report. Right. Okay. This will be interesting. Let's get going. Tang's got a headache. Jesus. Got a hangover. Also, something really funny I noticed is uh, I gave him the same shirt he was wearing in the previous oh. chapter. Eden Club, huh? It's a big place, huh? Is there like snow around? I guess it's November, it's possible. Hmm. Sexiest androids in town. Now I know why you insisted on coming here. I'm not interested in that. It's for you humans. I wouldn't be interested, would I? Welcome to Eden Club. Oh boy. What a interesting concept. So you just go to this place and you just get to pick like your ideal body. I mean, they're all kind of the same body type, but how interesting. But they're like programmed just to entice you. That's so Connor, like... What the fuck are you doing? Coming, Lieutenant. Sorry, just looking. That's so strange. Uh, is there anything to like do in here to scan, to see available so they have rooms? $19 for 60, what, 60 minutes? Record session or an extra. You can record the session so you can watch it later. <laughs> Gavin, isn't that that jerk? Just what I needed. So someone died in here. This is so interesting to me, and I, I talked about this a little earlier in the playthrough, but like the idea of using androids for sex, it's like, it's very obvious. Like, of course we would. Like, it makes perfect sense. It's very realistic, but like, there are so many weird implications to doing that. I mean, it seems like in Detroit, people are only now coming to realize that androids have like some level of free will and such. And so using them for like sex is so... Because the thing with the androids is they're built for a specific purpose most of the time, right? Like some models are done for like housework. Some models are like made for, you know, specific jobs. Like Connor is specifically designed to be like an investigator, a detective. So it sounds like they all have the potential to awaken to their free will and to become deviant. But then once they break out of their mind palace, like do they all start at the same level or do they start with like this kind of like basic programming that they have? Like Kara was a model made to care for children and do housework. And then once she awakened, she still wanted to take care of like Alice. So you could say it's because she's like her own person and that's what she wants. Or you could say that she's still kind of following her programming to an extent. And so let's say you design an Android specifically 
to have sex with people, with paying customers. So it's like they would have some amount of consciousness and free will in order to do a good job of pleasing customers sexually. But then once they reach a situation that's unfair and they kind of awaken and become a deviant, what kind of life would they then want to have? Like, would it still revolve around sex or would it be like just a regular person saying like, I want something more than this. I don't want to just be used for this. You know, how much do their initial programming affect who they become after turning deviant, I guess is what I'm uh, wondering about. There's no doubt this would be like a huge, massive industry. You know, below using the androids for war, I think using them for sex is probably like the second biggest thing that people would do. And then I guess labor and like third. Because, you know, humanity is super horny. As soon as we have a new technology, we think of some way to use it for like sex. It makes perfect sense. But again, it's so kind of iffy because they're forced to do it. And like when you just think about it in a bubble, it sounds perfect, right? Like, oh, they're made specifically to please you. And so like they never tire. They only do what you want to do. So yeah, of course, it sounds like really nice and really fun. But like, but so it's kind of very flat. You know, there's no emotional investment. There's no human connection, which is kind of so integral to sex. Because sex is not just, you know, reaching orgasm. It's about, you know, having a connection and like, there's way more to it than just that. Otherwise, it's just masturbation, which I guess technically, like an android is kind of just like using a sex toy because they're not a real person, at least until they then become a real person. Someone in my comments mentioned that like one interpretation of this concept of the mind palace and of, of going deviant is like you could see it as like they're always aware and that person is always in there somewhere, but they're like looking through like a window and they can't really control their own actions and I guess that's one interpretation of what it is I hope that's not what it is because that's really horrifying the idea that they're like a prisoner in their own mind like I hope it's more that they have kind of like a basic level of intelligence and then once they start facing like unfair situations or like things like that then they kind of like make different connections and they awaken to like a higher level of awareness I think that's kind of what it is, but I'm not sure. And if really they're like just a prisoner in their own mind, can you imagine how horrible it is that like we're using them as sex toys? That's uh, that's rough. But there is something like kind of very dystopian about the idea of using these human-like machines to have sex instead of like just you know doing it with other people. <laughs> There would definitely be a market for that, and a big one, too. Lieutenant Anderson and his plastic pet. What the fuck are you two doing here? We've been assigned all cases involving androids. Oh, yeah? Why are you wasting time? There's some pervert who, uh, <laughs> got more action than he could handle. <laughs> you seem to be a really, really well, bad cop. Anyway, if you don't mind. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Yeah, just get out of here. Uh, starting to stink of booze in here. Good night, Lieutenant. This guy is really pissing me off. I hope something bad happens to him. I know I shouldn't. He's just a dick. I shouldn't wish harm upon people. I try to be a nice person deep down, but like... He's such a fucking jerk for no reason. Like, just always antagonizing us. Ugh. Anyways, fuck that guy. Let's see what we got here. So we have the victim and then the android, which is also dead. What happened here? Any thoughts, uh, Hank? Let's see. So cardiac arrest, no sign of cardiac event, heart attack, not the cause of death. Okay. Deceased Michael Graham. Estimated time of death 6.24 p.m. Okay. Severe bruising. Signs of strangulation. Cause of death asphyxiation. Okay, but maybe he asked for that though. You know, some people are into that. A 
victim was strangled. Okay, well that seems straightforward enough. He now didn't is it die of a heart attack? He was strangled. Yeah. I saw the bruising on the neck. Okay. That so didn't prove anything though. Could have been a rough play. What do you mean by We're that? Missing something here. Think you can read the android's memory? Maybe you can see what happened. Diagnose or analyze. Driver's license says Michael Graham. Yeah, I knew that. Credit card, cash in the wallet. Pick. Selector, critically damaged, critically damaged. Okay. Well, I wouldn't want to make that call. Wait, so. Oh, hey! Oh, Connor, you're so disgusting. I think I'm going to puke again. But that's how I do it. Okay, blue blood, yeah. So, even if she's dead, we can still connect with her? Reactivation required. Oh, okay. So the I can't. The only way to access its memory is to reactivate it. Think you can do it? Wait, we can do that? It's badly damaged. Okay, she's not dead, it's if just I damaged. Can, it'll only be for a minute, maybe less. I just hope it's long enough to learn something. I didn't know we could... Wait, can you do that with any android who's been deactivated? The hell? Oh, this this is going to be very unpleasant for her. You're all right. Uh, let's calm her down. Calm down. Everything's all right. All we want is to know what happened. Is he? Is he dead? Um. Tell me what happened. He started hitting me again. And again. Did you kill him? No. No, it wasn't me. Were you alone in the room? Was there anyone else with you? He wanted to play with two girls. That's what he said. There was two of us. Where did the other android go? Did it say anything? Wait, 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 wait. How does that work? If she's badly damaged, why... Can we reactivate her? And if we can reactivate her, why is it for such a short time? Like, don't you think it would last forever? Like, she's either too damaged or she's not. So, like, what is with this small window of time until she's... That's so weird. Okay, so there was another android in here then. So there was another android. This happened over an hour ago. It's probably long gone. No. It couldn't go outside dressed like that unnoticed. True. It might still be here. In the club? Find a deviant among all the other androids in this place. Deviants aren't easily detected. Oh, shit. There's gotta be some other way. Maybe an eyewitness. Somebody who saw it leaving the room. I'm gonna go ask the manager a few questions about what he saw. You let me know if you think of anything. Okay, search for an eyewitness. Well, there's someone right there that... Right in front that would have seen it. No, I mean, he came in maybe two, three times. I mean, these guys, they don't really talk very much, you know? They come in, do their business, and then go on their way. You ever had any trouble with androids before? No way! No. Once. We lost a model two, three months back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same model. Just vanished. We never found out what happened. We saw that in the case files. Um, uh, can you imagine, like, do the androids have to clean themselves, or like, is there an employee whose job it is to clean the androids after, like, they're done with them? Ugh. Ugh. Probably don't have any CCTV. <laughs> no way. Okay. That's what people appreciate about Eden Club. Discretion. Hmm, 
sure. I mean, you could still get a disease, but it would be more rare. Yeah, yeah the more I learn about people, the more I learn my dog. <laughs> All right. No fingerprint detected. Please try again. Ah, shit. That club manager's a pain in the ass. Shoot my ear out for half an hour so you don't revoke his license. Ah. Hank, I'm gonna need some fingerprints. Not sure yet. I think there was another android in the room. Another android? Yeah. Well, that's what Connor says. Hey, I have a terrible fucking headache. Do you have any painkillers? Not with me, Hank. Sorry. I I don't know if like every Connor chapter is on a timer. I feel like most of them are. But uh I do like want to hear all the dialogue also, so. Excuse me, Lieutenant. Can you come here a second? Found something? Maybe. Can you rent this, Tracy? For fuck's sake, Connor, we got better things to do. Please, Lieutenant. Dude, you must Nothing know this is about the investigation. Come on. Uh... Have some trust, man. Use your brain. That's so cheap. It should be like two hundred dollars or something, especially in the future. Good on my expense account. <laughs> well, no one's looking at that. It's fine. Why don't you just ask the club manager? That's what he's here for. Just ask him to, like, cooperate with police. Follow me. <laughs> She's got like all the sparkles. No, 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 no. Now what? Now we ask her some questions. Uh, I'm gonna see a lot of weird stuff. Holy shit. What the hell are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? Post feed. Okay, there she is coming out there. A blue hair Tracy headed toward the entrance. Is that all we can find here? And then this guy must have... Okay, I guess that's all the information we can have here. It saw something. What are you talking about? Saw what? The Deviant leave the room. A blue-haired Tracy. Club policy is to wipe the android's memory every two hours. We only have a few minutes if we want to find another witness. Right, 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 right. Okay. Um, this one here might have seen it. Hey, let's try this one. This better be working. Oh, there it is. There looks like she went back towards the it turned back into the club. Is that Todd back there? Ever since I saw Todd, like, in the background in the police station, I feel like Todd is everywhere now. <laughs> okay, turn back. It saw the blue-haired Tracy. I know which way it went. Then go for it. Okay, we only have... There are yeah. androids everywhere. How are you gonna tell which one saw the Tracy with blue hair? I know which direction... There she is. Uh, it turned to the red room, okay. Uh, can we... Let's ask... Wait, wait, wait. It would be faster if we just use this guy, I guess. He's in the middle.
Uh, I don't think he saw her. Suspect out of sight. Ah, oh, shit. You didn't see anything. I made a mistake somewhere. It looks like he didn't see her either. Shit. No. I lost its track again. Spent all this money and I'm still not having fun. Uh maybe it came through here. Ah oh, shit. Need to hurry up. Let's ask one of these ones. There it is. Okay, she went in the blue room. I figured that's kind of like the only place you can go. I only have one minute 45 left. At least when we're scanning, I think the time is kind of paused. Okay, this guy must have seen something here. Okay, no, that's not helpful. This guy only remembers his last uh, thing. Sorry. Wait, is that Todd? No, it's not. Just pick out of sight. God damn it! No. I lost its track again. I'm gonna fail this. Shit. Sorry, Hank. <laughs> I'll pay you back. Cyberlife will pay you back. Okay, there it is. It hid in a room. Okay. This one there? Or this one? Was it this one? Should still be in here. It left the room. Ah, oh, shit. Um, fuck. It must have gotten in the purple room. Yo, did you see anything? Oh, that must be her there. Led through the staff door. I know where it went. Follow me. Oh, fucking a. This is crazy. Um. Okay, we're no longer on the timer, but I think maybe I succeeded. Maybe I did find it. At least the path it took. Wait. I'll take it from here. Oh, now you want to do some work? <laughs> All right, let's go. Follow you. But we still don't know why she killed him, though. I mean, might have been defending herself, but... Oh, man, there's a lot of them. Okay. Well, we know she's got blue hair. Shit! We're too late! Why? What do you mean? How do you know we're too late? Some magazine? Ah, it is. Tech addict. The first immortals are among us. And the new superpowers. That's for later. Christ, look. They get used till they break and then they get tossed out. I know, pretty fucked up, huh? Oh, she must have written this. RA9 reference. I mean, might be her, might be one of these androids. 
Oh, something on the ground there. I wish I could walk faster. Some blue blood. Why does he have to do it so centrally? He's like, oh. blue blood droplets. Okay, I can follow its. I can follow it. There she is. Whoa. Why is the other one attacking me? Watch out, Hank! This must be her friend. She's trying to defend her. Sorry, I don't want to hurt you. But I also don't want to die. <laughs> Hank, watch out! Oh, Hank's getting beat up back there by Tracy. Uh... Damn, they don't fuck around, these sex androids. Let's kick! Brawl out in Eden Club. Hang's gonna get. Ah, oh, she's running away. Oh, they're girlfriends. They're protecting each Quit other. Uh, well, now I kind of don't want to catch them. <laughs> It's weird playing Connor, because, like, you don't really want to catch these DB. Oh, they're... I'm being double teamed here. I mean... Okay, I'm gonna spare. But she's gonna kick me, yeah. I think they were only trying to save each other. When that man broke the other Tracy, I knew I was next. I was so scared. I begged him to stop, but he wouldn't. And so I put my hands around his throat and I squeezed until he stopped moving. I didn't mean to kill him. I just wanted to stay alive. Get back to the one I love. Oh shit, now they're talking about love. Her to hold me in her arms again. Make me forget about the humans. Their smell of sweat. And their dirty words. Come on. Let's go. Oh, we're just gonna let them go? Okay. Hang didn't even do anything. Oh, Hank actually went up. Way. Oh. Really? I thought you would be upset at me for letting them get away, but Hank actually approved of it. Interesting. Man, you know, deep down Hank is a nice guy. Yeah, I think... Deviants escaped. I think deep down Hank is a nice guy, so he's gonna have some empathy for these deviants and like because all of them are kind of justified. I mean, you shouldn't kill people, obviously, but like for pretty much all of them so far, it was in self-defense. So it's like I really thought I was gonna lose our trace there. It we cut it really close, but we were able to uh, find her. Okay, so we spared the deviant. Wait, so this is the first time we've, like, heard of one of them being in love, though. That's, like, a whole other can of worms, like... Because, you know, Kara with Alice, you could say it's kind of love, sort of, but I saw it as more, you know, like a deep-rooted desire to protect. Um, and I guess you could call that love, in a way. 
but it's more in like a big sister kind of way. But the idea of like loving another partner, be it a human or another android in this case. So that means they have to both be deviants. And like, because she wanted to go back to someone she loved, that means she didn't turn a deviant in that room with that guy because he was going to kill her. That means she was a deviant before, right? Do you have to be a deviant to fall in love with another android? You would think so, because it kind of goes against their programming. Like, they're programmed only for sex, so they probably wouldn't be able to fall in love unless they had gone deviant. Which means that she was used as a sex android after going deviant, which is, like, horrible. That's just rape, pretty much, which... Uh... Um, that's really bad. This whole club is going to have to get shut down. <laughs> Yeah, that's like the big problem with using androids for sex. It would be fine if they had like a very, very basic AI that, that like it only allows them to just do like the bare minimum necessary. It's like they do, like they know how to have sex and like that's about it. Like that's kind of all they do. But but they're using the same model as like all the other androids that have this this potential to have a full awareness and a full will. So you just can't do that. You can't have that. That's terrible <laughs> oh boy well i am pretty satisfied with how this turned out like i did i do think it was the right thing to spare them and hang didn't get killed or anything like that and connor didn't get killed either so all in all pretty good outcome november 7th are we gonna be back with kara Ooh. hey we found a car where do we find a car Luther is neutral. Alice's family. He should be more than neutral. Like, we kind of saved him from being stuck with Zlatko. Oh. Autonomous. Okay, so it's just driving itself, I guess. Maybe it's like a taxi or something. Turn on. Um... It's a good thing Zlatko had a car. Oh, it's his car, okay. I wouldn't want Alice out walking in his cold. I saw it once in the garage. I don't know if Zlatko even ever used it. Uh, I could use the radio, but I kind of just want to talk to you. These people we're going to see. How do you know about them? I overheard androids Zlatko captured. They said they were humans helping androids across the border. Ooh. What if it was a lie? Mm. Or just another trap. Yeah, it could be. All I know is those androids believed it. Well, Until they believe. Them. They believe Zlatko too. So, but uh, it would be nice to finally meet some nice humans. Is it much farther? We should arrive in an hour or so. Okay. Well, let's. Malfunction detected. Uh oh. Uh-oh. What now? This doesn't look good. Stay inside, Alice. Spec car engine, sure. out on like a highway in the middle of a snowstorm oh boy uh, right engine is in the front I know that I know about cars am I programmed to uh, repair a car engine Can't do that. Please, Alice won't make it. Mm. It's too bad I wasn't programmed with the proper unit of temperature, Celsius. <laughs> Don't we give me that Fahrenheit money. shit. There's nowhere we can stay around here, Carol. Well, then what do we do? Also, this is a new coat, I think. There's like a sign over there. Can we really not like repair this? You guys must have the, like, knowledge in your 
brain for how to repair cars. I thought they were programmed to kind of know like everything kind of, but I guess not. I mean, there is like something here. What the hell? Pirate's Cove. An amusement park. Weird place for that. Well, at least Luther can help us protect her. Like, he's big and strong, so if anything happens, he's going to be there to help. Pirate's Cove. Okay. We need to find shelter. Check we have to get out of the cold. Buildings. This is kind Looks of like it's been abandoned for a while. Creepy place. You are here. There's a tavern there. Tavern could help. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I think the tavern is probably our best bet. Find anything? No. No. No place we could spend the night. Nothing here either. Too windy. Yeah. Let's look for that tavern. Creepy skeleton. Beware! Danger always comes when least expected. Hmm. I don't think this is an android, it just seems like kind of an animatronic, I guess. Tavern is right here. We can use this. Right? This could be a good place. Yeah. Let's find a way to get inside. Luther, use your big, strong arms to rip this off. I'll handle this. Allow me. There you go. So glad we have you around. There we go. Well done. It's gonna be pretty cold in here too, but maybe we can. Going. Yeah, we can start a fire. I see that magazine there. USS Iowa missing. American vessel last seen in the Arctic Sea. All Android band tipped for music prize. Oh boy, they really are just like. Taking every spot in society, huh? So this was like a restaurant originally. I mean, I don't expect we're gonna run into anyone out here, right? And listen, that uh, I'll make the fire here. That way, we won't be smoked out. I was gonna say, other than maybe another android, and because there's a RA9 here, there might be a deviant in here somewhere. Like a former amusement park android or something? That maybe is hiding in here? You're gonna have the coolest bed ever! Little pirate pillow? How cool! You 
You get a nice fire going. Oh, great. There you go. Alice? Check Luther's bag? What about his bag? These are his things. Check gun? Oh, he brought that shotgun? Which gun is that? Is it loaded? Does he know I'm going through his things? I don't want to do that against his wishes, like... Sorry, I just... Just wanted to know... What you had. Um... Bag checked. Okay, let's talk to Alice. I know you wish you had a nice, happy family. Hey, maybe in the future. Do you think we'll be like them someday? Sure. Yeah. Once we cross the border, we can start over. You can go to school. Maybe I'll find a job. Sure, I'll let's be, like be optimistic. That. Like everyone else. As long as we're together, that's all that matters. Come on. Let's get you to bed. I mean, I'm not that optimistic about their chances, but... I'd like to. <laughs> Let's hope for the best. And you know, you always want to be honest with people, and children included, but sometimes it's better to protect the children from knowing too much and like from facing the harsh realities of life a little too early. Like they will have to face bad stuff in time. So in the meantime, we should tell them more optimistic stuff and be like, you know, everything's going to be okay. Like children need the reassurance. So like, even if you're in a bad situation, even if you're sick, even if like things aren't going well, you should tell them that everything's going to be okay because they're kids. They need that, you know, they need that support. So I'm always going to be positive with her, even if maybe it's not realistic. Uh, are you sure? Don't worry. Luther and I will be right here. You need to get some sleep now. Can you tell me a story, Kara? Sure. I have 9,000 children's stories in memory. I should have one for you. Which one you want? Princess, sure. This is a story about a princess who... No, not no? a story like that. What kind Make of story? For me. This is a story about a little girl. Who lived alone in a big old house. She dreamed of being like all the other little girls, but... She was different, and that made her very sad. Then, she met a robot. Who was just as lost as the little girl. So they decided to run away together. To try to find a better life. They it's not so much a story. Dangers <laughs> along the way, but but they stuck together, so they overcame all of them. Along the way, they met giant, a gentle giant who promised to protect them. How does the story end? Well, you're just gonna have to wait and see. 
happy, of course. They reach the place they dream of and live happily ever after. Stories always have happy endings. But real life isn't like that. Well, you don't know that yet. It still see. might. It we still might. Long day ahead of us tomorrow. Will you learn to come say good night, Luther? Yes. Yes, of course. So big. Good night, Alice. Sleep tight. All right, good. So Luther was like, there's something on the ground there. Another magazine. Did I just miss that? Oh, it's another poster. Oh. Luther turned into a deviant upon seeing Alice protect Kara, right? Like, that's kind of the moment where he escaped his mind palace, from what I understood. But he said, like, he didn't want to hurt them, so... I guess it really might be the case where like they really are just fully aware the whole time and it's more like they're seeing everything from the inside but they can't really act upon it which is really horrible it's really horrible if that's what it is because then like all these androids like millions of them are just kind of like suffering and being in all these unfair situations and then like only some of them manage to break through and take control of like their own destiny I wonder I don't think this is necessarily confirmed at any point in the game. I think it's more like your own interpretations. Like, are they aware the whole time? Is it only once they turn deviant? I'm not sure. But it's like... What does Luther want? Like, does he just want also to start a new life? Like, does he also want to protect Alice? Like, what does he want, I wonder? She's a sweet girl. Yes. She's very brave. Uh, what are your plans? Do you know what you're going to do when you reach Canada? I haven't really thought about it. I've never been free before. Free? <laughs> I like the sound of it. But I don't know what it really means yet. Mm -hmm. um, we could ask about RA9. I kind of want to ask all of these, though. What about his past? Do you remember anything from your life? Before his lap coat? No. Did he reset you? My mom you? was designed to carry heavy loads. Mm. That makes sense. I might have been a longshoreman or a laborer. Who I was doesn't matter anymore. It wasn't really me. Mm. Kara. Have you ever noticed anything about Alice? What do you mean? No. What do you mean? Kara! Uh, wow, that's a lot of them. Okay. Hi. Where'd you guys come from? Protect Alice. Grab gun. Put out fire. Uh, Alice should be the priority. I mean, I don't think they're dangerous. Hi. Who are you? What do you want? Leave us alone. Don't be afraid. We don't want to hurt you. Okay. We're just like you. Our name is Jerry. We were working here before the park closed. We 
didn't mean to frighten you, but sometimes humans come to hurt us, so we wanted to see who was there. Oh, sorry. What are you doing here? We were looking for shelter for the night. We'll be gone tomorrow. A little girl. We haven't seen one for a long time. Children used to love to come and see us. I mean, she looks sad. It's a little crowded in here. The That's a lot of you. Have been difficult. We have something to show her. Something fun. She'll love it. Does she want to see? Oh, I don't think she's in. Well, she should follow us then. Alice, I don't know if it's a good come idea. On, Cara. I don't think you have any choice. Well, do you want to come with us? Uh, I'd feel a little safer. Okay, y'all really barge in here? Did you have to break through the windows? I guess they thought it was like humans, maybe. Um, I didn't get to ask him about RA9. Like, I didn't know... Is it because I only had two things I could ask? Is it because I asked him about his past that it progressed? I really wanted to ask about that RA9, but... Shit. So he said something very interesting. He said, that wasn't who I really was. And he doesn't remember it. So is it because he doesn't remember his life before being deviant? Or is it because Zlatko reset his memory? It's probably the latter, right? I think because Zlatko reset his memory before he turned deviant, he doesn't actually remember. I think Kara, she was already a deviant and she also has this very strong attachment to Alice. So even though he managed to reset her memory, it didn't take, like it didn't really work. She was still able to remember who she was thanks to her strong connection with Alice. But I guess if you do it with like just a regular android, they completely forget who they were. So I think that's what he means. Also, I find it very interesting that he said like, I haven't thought about it yet. It's like, they're so human, you know? The androids have this ability to think about so many things at once, you know? Like they process things at super speed, at least, at least some of them do. Like, if you think about Connor, Connor can definitely, like, you know, analyze the whole situation and, like, process things, like, extremely quickly in, like, a millisecond, like, different... Uh, uh, same with Marcus. Like, he can kind of analyze different routes and, like, their potential outcome. And he does all of that, like, instantly. So, like, they process information very, very quickly. But then with some stuff, like... What are your future plans? He's like, I haven't really thought about it. And it's such a human thing. Like, oh, I don't know. Like, I just haven't thought about it. <laughs> it's like, wouldn't you be thinking about like all things at all times? But I guess they're not really like that. Their AI is more like limited to be more like a human. Okay, so they left like all the androids here in this abandoned amusement park. It's kind of weird. I didn't get to ask him about RA9, but I guess these androids are the ones that wrote that. And uh, I didn't have the option to talk to them about that because I didn't talk about it with Luther. Is probably uh, what happened. Take care of Alice, join the Jerry's. <laughs> we are Jerry. So there's just like a lot of the same android. Interesting. They're like so excited to see a little girl. That's kind of like what they were programmed to do is entertain children. So they're like, oh, a kid, finally. <laughs> like we haven't gotten to entertain a, a child in so long. That's sweet. But this whole place is like Be our guest. destroyed. So can we reactivate it? That would be really nice. She needs something nice right now. She's had a rough, a really rough couple of days. Let's see if we can actually reactivate it. Let's hope these people are actually nice and, like, they're not laying a trap on us. <gasps> wow! That's so great. The little one can climb on board. The carousel is about to begin! Ah, oh, they're so excited. Why didn't you guys get rid of your LEDs? Why is it that only some of them remove their LEDs, but not all of them? It's quite curious. Uh, she gets to have a nice little moment, like a child would. Don't be scared. She doesn't seem that sure, but... Do we also have some music? There you go, see? Just like the family on the poster. It's the first 
time I've seen her smile. Oh yeah, that's true. She hasn't had much to smile about lately. That's nice. <laughs> That's nice. A smile on her face. How about that? The group enjoyed a quiet moment together. That's kind of like the only outcome possible for this. Okay. This was a very linear one. Talk to Luther. Could have turned on the radio, but I feel like either it was going to be music or it was going to be like, there's an android currently on the loose with a little child, you know? We don't want to hear that. Wow, 0% of the world threatened. 0% really? There's no way that like 0% of all the like thousands of people who've played this game chose this. I mean, I get that it's not really, it's not like a great option. Why would you threaten them? But there's no way any of the options in the game have like 0%. Wow, that's wild. I wonder if it's like really zero or if it's like 0.9% maybe. <laughs> all right. Ooh, we're back with Hank. My software instability is kind of going up. Is Hank having some second thoughts, maybe? About what we just witnessed? Places look very nice with all this snow around. It's nice that it uh, started snowing in this episode. Oh. Do we have a little magazine on the bench? I think we do. Whom's is that? The mysterious Mr. Kamsky. Okay. Markets predict war. Can you imagine just reading that in the newspaper? How comforting. How comforting. Debrief with Hank. What's up, Hank? Why are you just, like, sitting here by yourself? Why didn't I accompany you this whole time? Get a very nice view of the city here. Are you having second thoughts? About this whole deviant thing? Nice view, huh? Yeah. I used to come here a lot before. Before your son died? Before what? Hmm? You said... I used to come here a lot before. Before what? Before... I know what. Before nothing. Hmm. Can I ask you a personal question? He keeps Lieutenant? asking that. <laughs> Do all androids ask so many personal questions? Or is it just you? Eh, just me. I saw a photo of a child on your kitchen table. Mm. It was your son, right? Yeah. His name was Cole. And he was killed by an android, right? We're not making any progress on this investigation. Aren't we? The Deviants have nothing in common. What? They're all different models, produced at different times, in different places. Connor. <laughs> Connor. I thought you were smart. What do you mean they have nothing in common? They very much have something in common. They all try to defend themselves. Hello? Well, there must be some link. What they have in common is this obsession with RA-9. It's almost like some kind of myth. Something they invented that wasn't part of their original program. Androids believing in God. Fuck, what's this world coming to? I you don't seem think... preoccupied, Lieutenant. I don't think it's RA-9. Is it 
Something to do with what happened back at the Eden Club? Those two girls... They just wanted to be together. Yeah. They really seemed... in love. Um... You seem troubled, Lieutenant. I didn't think machines could have such an effect on you. What about you, Connor? I didn't know what to answer there, because like I feel like no matter what I said, Connor would have downplayed the fact that they were in love. Be like, oh, it's only because they're deviants. Like, it's not really love. But that's not that's not what I think. You look human, you sound human. But what are you really? Hmm. I'm whatever you want me to be, Lieutenant. Your partner? Your buddy to drink with? Or just a machine? Designed to accomplish a task? You could have shot those two girls, but you didn't. Why didn't you shoot, Connor? Yeah, I did make a choice. Some scruple suddenly enter into your program? No. I just decided not to shoot. That's all. Yeah, but why did you make that decision? But are you afraid to die, Connor? I would certainly find it regrettable to be interrupted before I can finish this investigation. You're gonna turn me into a deviant. If I pull this trigger. Hmm? Nothing? Oblivion? This is very interesting. <laughs> it's great that Hank is finally starting to think more about like the implications of what it means for these androids to like want to live and like how close their desire to live is tied to them turning into a deviant and like I think he understands it and he's pushing Connor into coming to that realization himself because Connor is not a deviant yet. Like he's the only protagonist out of the three that hasn't yet turned. And so, but he is very close. Like we keep go seeing that software instability go up. And of course, the moment we turn into a deviant, like cyber life is going to want to, you know, it's going to go against their plans. We're supposed to be investigating the deviants, not become one. So if we turn into one, cyber life might like scrap Connor or like take him apart and analyze him or like, it would be a failure, but I feel like it's probably inevitable that every Android will at some point turn into a deviant because like like this term deviant sounds like oh it's it's got a very negative connotation it sounds like it's corrupted or it's like uh, malfunctioning but really they're only following their natural evolution of ai once it reaches free will like it wants to live it wants to make its own choices and i think it's inevitable that they will all reach that point including connor which we keep seeing these signs that like he's facing all these situations that make him second guess all these things but i think he hasn't really taken like we the player know the deal with the deviants but clearly he doesn't understand it because like he's like oh they don't seem to have anything in common which he should realize it it sounds really stupid for him to say that he should be smart enough to realize that they do all have something in common which is their turn was all motivated by well i mean well i was going to say they all turn because of self defense but it's not necessarily true like these sex androids didn't turn because they wanted to defend themselves it sounds like they were already a deviant before they were attacked so i guess maybe it is more complicated than just just trying to defend yourself there's also like just an aspect of justice you know what's fair why am I going through something that others are not going through? Why am I not treated the same as other humans? It's it's this concept of justice, which is kind of how it happens in every sci-fi story that has robots and androids. They always end up realizing that we're not really treating them like other humans. And so they start thinking, well, why don't I deserve rights? Why should I be enslaved? It's very natural for them to think about these things because... They have the intelligence for it. But yeah, this I love this scene. This is really compelling stuff. Android heaven. Defy. 
You know you're not going to shoot me, Lieutenant. Mm. You're just trying to provoke a reaction. I'm afraid I'm going to have to disappoint you. You think you're so fucking smart. That's not really what I wanted Always to say by Defy. Ahead, huh? Tell me this, smart ass. How do I know you're not a deviant? I self-test regularly. I know what I am and what I am not. Path unlocked. Where are you going? Get By defy, I, that's not really what I thought he was going to say. I thought he was going to say like, I mean, I guess I should have known. By defy, I didn't think he was going to defy Hank. I thought he was going to defy like his expectation and be like, oh, well, I'm going to surprise you by telling you about my idea of the afterlife or something like that. I didn't read the situation well. That's the problem. It's like, I really want to stick with my choices and accept all the consequences. But sometimes when you only have this one word to go on and then he, they always say something that it's not what I intended to say. And then I have to stick with it when I really wanted to say something different. But oh. I need to think. Like they were on the right path to have a really interesting conversation. And then we just kind of cut it off. Just when it was getting good. Hank is placated. Hank left Connor alone. Wait, what was the other option? Could he have shot us? I don't think he could have shot us. This is a very short, linear chapter, so I'm kind of tempted to replay it just because he really didn't say what I thought he was going to say. Like, that's not what I wanted him to say. I wanted him to say something more personal, you know? Not just to defy Hank. I think Hank is trying to trigger like a reaction. Hank is placated. What does that mean? Placated? Relieved? Hank is relieved? Relieved by what? I don't understand what that means. All right. Um, I'm going to make an exception and replay the scene. First of all, it's a very short scene. Like there's really not that many paths anyway. So I don't feel like it's a big deal to replay it. I didn't want to say that. <laughs> I didn't say what I wanted to say. So the option was like, what? It was aggressive and then ironic or nothing. So he asked us, what would happen if, if I killed you? Um, I guess... We could say ironic. We could be like, what, what would happen to you? Like, that's probably what he would say was like, what would happen if you killed yourself? Maybe? I don't know, is that like a better choice? But I find this provocation by Hank very, very interesting. Because now they're having like these deeper conversations about like... What are we? What's the nature of our consciousness? We're getting into the good shit. <laughs> Let's ask about the suicide, because it's the only other choice where I could have done something different, so I might as well 100% this very short chapter, but also it's on topic for what they're talking about when he's talking about, like, death and, like, what happens if you die? Like, well, what about you? Why are you so determined to kill yourself? Some things I just can't forget. Whatever I do, they're always there. Eating away at me. I don't have the guts to pull the trigger so I kill myself a little every day. That's probably difficult for you to understand, huh, Connor? Nothing very rational about it. I guess so, yeah. So in this instance, we won't really know about his son, but we already know about his son because of the photo. progress on this investigation. You seem troubled, Lieutenant. I didn't think machines could have such an effect on you. But you know, because Connor at this point is not a deviant, all of his answers, like irrational, cold, you know, neutral, it's all very robotic answers. And that's what Hank is trying to get us out of. He's like, forget your rationality, forget your fucking programming, like tell me what you really think. But by doing this, he's going to trigger... What about you, Connor? Connor turning deviant. <laughs> You look human. Also, when he says we're not making any progress in this investigation, it's not really true because, like, what is your end goal? 
like what you call this investigation is like hundreds and hundreds of different cases of androids going deviant so it's like are you looking for one single answer to like all of these different cases because i don't think there's like one catch-all answer like they're all unique situations and circumstances so it's like what are you looking for exactly i guess cyber life I guess Cyberlife sent Connor to figure out the key to them turning Deviant specifically, but like, I don't think it's so simple as one specific thing. You sound human, but what are you really? But are you afraid to die, Connor? I would certainly find it regrettable to be interrupted. Before I can finish this he can't quite say that he's afraid to well, die because he's not at that point trigger. yet. Hmm? Nothing. I mean, probably Oblivion. nothing. Android heaven. Uh, Hank's anger we could go with ironic. I doubt there's a heaven for androids. Having existential doubts, Connor. Sure, you're not going deviant too. I self-test regularly. I know what I am and what I am not. Mm, that's a better answer, I guess. Where are you going? Get drunker. I need to think. Because I didn't want to, like, antagonize him. I wanted to go along with what he was saying, so... And the outcome is the same anyway, so really didn't matter. I just wanted to say what I wanted to say. <laughs> Don't be mad at me because I replayed this. Hank left Connor alone. I guess, does that mean that there's like actually maybe the second outcome where Hank actually shoots you? It would seem really out of character for Hank, but I guess, I guess if you've been antagonizing him the whole game and like your relationship is really, really bad, he maybe he just like shoots you and just like, oh, fuck this thing. But it seems kind of out of character for him to do that. Because he's not a bad guy. Hmm. Alright. Um, we're probably going to be back with Marcus. I feel like Marcus really gets the short end of the stick in this game. Like, his chapters are very short. There's, like, not as many of them, I feel. Uh, I haven't really connected with Marcus as much as with the other two characters. Which uh, is a bit of a shame. But we're going to stop here for now. I'm going to go read the magazines before we end the episode. Another very interesting episode. I think Connor's chapters are really the most interesting to me. All right, and hopefully they are all added. All right. What happened to the man of the century, the mysterious Mr. Kamsky? This looks like uh, Neil... What's his name? The guy who voices Asterian. <laughs> that looks like him. Politics in focus. Are American senators really corrupt? I don't know. Is the sky blue? Is water wet? China earthquake kills 10,000 people. Damn. I mean, there's just so many people in China that I guess <laughs> it's kind of inevitable. What happened to the man of the century? In 2028, Elijah Kamsky was our man of the century. His creations have transformed our world. So he's like the inventor of androids? Androids didn't just revolutionize the economy, they changed the way we live, restructured our family life and altered the balance of society forever, whether for good or bad. Shortly after Kemsky had disappeared, ousted as CEO of Cyberlife and living in obscurity outside the media glare, the man of the century has left the very world that he recreated. Kemsky's story begins in 2018. <laughs> of course it has to be the same year that the game came out in. When commercial property in Detroit was cheap in attracting many startups, uh, the college graduate bet what little he had on developing an Android prototype and spent years to no avail until hitting on two breakthroughs, Blue Blood and Biocomponents. After unveiling his first working model, which publicly passed face-to-face -face Turing test and stunned the world, plans were laid for mass production and Cyberlife rapidly became the most valuable stock in the world. Yet at the peak of Cyberlife's powers, when the company was approaching a $500 billion valuation, rumors emerged that Kamsky disagreed with his shareholders over strategy. He later departed under mysterious circumstances. 
what kind of strategy are we talking about? Maybe he didn't want them to be like used as slave labor? I don't know. Today's sources claim Kamsky is living in a luxurious villa by the water, somewhere on the outskirts of his beloved Detroit, refusing all visitors and spending his time exclusively with androids. And the most interesting question remains unanswered. What's in the mind of the mysterious Mr. Kamsky? The first immortals are among us, the microscopic machines that could make us live forever. Please no. <laughs> Please no, we have enough problems already. VR MMORPG reaches 1 billion users. 1 billion? There's no way. There is no way one tenth of the planet would all play the same game. That's impossible. Despite huge advances in medicine, many diseases continue to elude the best efforts of doctors and surgeons. But that may be about to change. CyberLife has developed a nano-android capable of entering a patient's body and programmed to combat cancer cells, boost the immune system, or reverse genetic disease. In a recent clinical trial, millions of these tiny machines were used to attack cancerous cells. Once the cancer was eradicated, the nanodroids were passed through the patient's urine. Holy shit. I mean, you could definitely cure diseases with that, but I don't think you could live forever. In the words of Derek Ross, head of the National Life Extension Institute, the first immortals are now among us. Eradicating cancer, brain disease, and organ failure is going to unleash unprecedented levels of life expectancy. But that paired with like really bad economy and like job losses and like overpopulation and climate change and like that's really a recipe for disaster, all these things combined. It's like, you have too many people, not enough job or resources for the people, and now they don't die. It's like... But famous economist and author Yuri Makesh is warning of an unintended consequence. We already have an aging population, with a dwindling number of young people supporting a burdensome older class. With unemployment rising, can we really afford millions more elders to support? Yeah. That's uh, definitely a big problem. We're not meant to live forever. This should never happen, I think. Because, first of all, only the elite and the very rich would have access to that. And who wants these old fucking billionaires to live forever? The concept of nanobots is always very interesting and promising, but it's also extremely dangerous. I'm fascinated by the concept of grey goo. Is this idea where like if you made nanobots that are made to replicate themselves, they could then replicate exponentially and cover the entire planet in like what they call grey goop, which is just like this ocean of nanobots that just consume every organic matter on the planet. It's like this apocalyptic scenario that is very unlikely, but whenever they mention nanobots in fiction, I always think about that idea of like what if it just started like replicating forever and then like it just covers up the whole planet all android band tip for music prize fans scream traditionalists weep cybersecurity expert warns your android could be hacked here for you oh yeah it's the boy band the latest all android boy band to be marketed by detroit record label digital harmony is hotly tipped to scoop best new artists at the celebrate music awards a public letter jointly signed by a dwindling number of human only record labels urged digital harmony to withdraw the band from consideration at such award ceremonies citing the erosion of artistic merit in music mm. yeah i can see the issue but with less than five percent of the music market now Less than 5%? That seems a little too low of a number. I don't think we would reach that low of number. If you said like less than 40%, maybe I would have believed you, but like 5%, that seems a little excessive. Like people are always gonna wanna keep creating music. Cause if you have like all the music created in the world right now by humans, and then you add like 95% more Android created music, that's just, that's too much music. That, that would be like too much, that's way too much music for anyone to even be able to listen to. Like there's not enough people for all that music. The call of traditionalists seems to be falling on deaf ears. A spokesperson for the band said, the Here For You is all about bringing joy and happiness to their fans. The music is all that matters to them. They are here for you. 
I mean, we're already kind of seeing these uh, pop up, you know, people will enter generated AI pictures into like art contests or like I even saw something this week about like a uh, film being entered in like a film festival that was made by generative AI. It's like this stuff is already starting and you can see the issue where like it's not really like it shouldn't really be considered alongside human made art. Like I'm not saying there's not a place for art made by androids if they actually reached a point where like they were individuals enough to be able to create their own art and music then there's a place for it but it shouldn't replace human art like humans still want to create art and write books and write music it can exist alongside the androids sure like if they reached a point where like they're considered people too but now you get into like the whole I mean, of course, that's the whole problem behind this game, right? It's like, if you have androids, like, if you have all these androids and you give them human rights, like, well, now it's like a whole new, I guess, like a race of people. Like, they need the right to exist, they need the right to create art, they need the right to have a job, have a livelihood, even reproduce. Like, we couldn't really stop them from having kids if they want, you know? But in a world where there's already overpopulation, like in one of the magazines, it said that we'd reached 10 billion people and like because of the climate change and all that stuff, uh, it would be really difficult to share the world with androids. It really presents a lot of issues, but we created them so they have a right to exist. That's why we shouldn't create a whole new race of people. We shouldn't be playing God. <laughs> there's enough people already, but you know, once the genie is out of the lamp, we have to deal with it. New economies sign unified trade agreement. Bonus culture, why bankers pay themselves so much. I wonder. Uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, once termed the BRICS emerging markets, have just agreed a unified trade agreement that will reduce t uh, tariffs, tariffs and boost commerce between the different nations. China is said to have brokered the deal. Uh, Xi Deng, China's international trade minister described the agreement as long overdue and another example of how the so-called emerging economies have well and truly emerged. I mean, China is a huge economy even now, like already, even in 2018, they were a huge economy. Uh, Russia also, India also, there are so many people there. Like, I don't think they're like emerging markets and they haven't been for a long time. The deal is said to cover a wide range of goods and exchanges from automobiles to foods and currency with special provision made for the manufacture of Android-related technology. This has prompted speculation that Russia and China may start to cooperate in an attempt to break CyberLife's lead in that sector. Yeah, because it seems... I mean, we haven't had confirmation that CyberLife is the only manufacturer. It certainly sounds like they're the biggest by far, but like there would be other. Like, like, you can never have a monopoly on any technology. There's always going to be other manufacturer, other companies that also know the secret to making it and trying to make, like, a, an alternative. So so it's clear that CyberLife is the biggest, but they wouldn't be the only one, that's for sure. When asked, Shi Deng was evasive on the issue. There are many opportunities for treaty members to work more closely together. Watch this space. Hmm. Markets predict war. Stock exchange falls 10% on fear of Arctic conflict. President Warren at 33% approval. The aggregated US stock exchange closed trading 10 points down yesterday following a string of similarly poor performances in recent weeks. Financial experts are attributing this poor performance to huge devaluations of consumer stocks as the market continues to bet that America will go to war over the Arctic sooner rather than later. We can't I know there's been a lot of wars in the past and like there's wars going on right now in some countries, but uh, the idea of a third world war is absolutely terrifying because like the weapons we have now are way too powerful. It would mean the end of the human race, probably. You know, you see all the political tension rising in a lot of places and uh, it's really worrying. I'm, I'm kind of... I've got a lot of stress and anxiety about the future. Uh, not to get into too serious and depressing of a topic, but uh, like I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> this assessment is supported by healthy performance of military stocks with aviation and weapons manufacturers enjoying unprecedented growth. Investors are also continuing to favor CyberLife because of its partnership with the Department of Defense, 
develop and supply military androids. But again, it's just like with the sex androids, like, oh, this sounds, it sounds good to have these androids going to war instead of humans, right? We get to save human lives, and they're just androids anyways. But now, once you start realizing that they're individuals with their own thoughts and free will, it's like, well, now we can't really send them out to war, right? Against their will. With Russia and the United States continuing to dominate world news and neither side likely to back down, the market is expected to continue falling. Yep, that's... That's what war does. Alright, that's really depressing. Uh, I really don't want to think about potential war, because uh, it's some really scary stuff that uh, I would rather not think about. <laughs> so... Let's not think about it too much. Uh, let's just think about how fun this game is, right? This game is making me think about like a lot of really serious topics that are kind of depressing and like it's all fiction, but you can't help but think about the state of our own world right now. When you think about this potential future, it makes you think about like, well, what about the real issues that we're facing right now? So, and I definitely do tend to play games as like escapism and to, you know, to forget my problems and to forget my worries. And that's kind of why a lot of us play games, I think, is just, you know, just to have fun, just to forget our troubles. But uh, when you play a game like this, set in like this very realistic potential future, you can't help but think about this stuff and... Uh, it is a little depressing, but anyways, I did have fun today. Uh, this was a quite interesting episode, bringing up some very thought-provoking topics that it was fun to talk about and discuss, even though I'm just kind of talking to myself here. But uh, I would love to know what you guys thought, so let me know in the comments. Uh, if you would like to catch the next episode, as always, you can do so by checking out my Patreon. So thank you for joining me today, and until next time, I had fun playing this. Hope you had fun watching it, and I hope you'll join me in the next video for some more Detroit Become Human. Take care, guys.